talk about how this is i mean the it, it's it, it's it stifles creativity obviously to some extent um maybe a great extent um and is exploitive i should say also uh full disclosure we have had some uh experience in this uh we uh, make videos and i can't uh be too explicit about it because one of the things that uh, happens in this situation is you're basically faced with the potential for a lawsuit and you just don't dare and you don't dare and so uh you negotiate a settlement and invariably uh, that in set a uh, settlement will i mean this is all hypothetical of course would involve a uh you know maybe a confidentiality type of thing about it but hypothetically speaking let's say we were to do a video six years ago and it included a piece of music um that had uh, that was consistent with a joke we were making at the time on the video. Somebody goes, not even the, the person who makes the music, but somebody goes and buys the rights subsequent to that. Then subsequent to that, they are scouring uh, YouTube. They find the use of the music and then they can come in and, and sue. that. I mean, it's dreadful. I know it's pretty dreadful. Um, yes. I will say, uh, we made 22, uh, hypothetically speaking in my hypothetical, I went to a uh, law school for a year. Um, that, uh, that video, it doesn't matter if you made 22 cents on that video, mm. no, no, right? It's no, not like it's a statutory offense. Yeah. Yeah. How is it that it got to that point? Like I can understand if I'm exploiting someone else's copyright, uh, work and, um, I'm exploiting it for my own commercial benefit. And it is substantially or even considerably reliant upon that copyright work for what I've generated. I mean, I can understand like, uh, you know, that, that could be problematic because it's, I'm, I'm basically stealing or plagiarizing on some level and, and commercializing it. Uh, but there, you know, uh, that seems to be completely not even part of the equation, but what do you think about that idea that I am, P plagiarizing or stealing the value of it I, I reject utterly the word plagiarize and the word steal uh, um, uh, uh, they're not right people use them as if they were uh, uh, somehow integral to the idea of copyright but you know the 1976 copyright act just like the 1988 uh, uh, UK one and the even lengthier European Union uh, uh, documents on this uh, do not mention the word plagiarism once mm. uh, what we're talking about is infringement and infringement um, I mean plagiarism you can get punished for under codes of honor I mean you could be sacked or you can be shamed and uh, plagiarism no. stealing is also really the wrong word um, the lobby groups of the uh, uh, of, uh, movie and um, music industries uh, have uh, carried out a long campaign since the 1970s trying to persuade everybody from Boy Scout groups to school teachers that copying is the same as stealing. But it is not. It's a big, I mean, it is not stealing because you leave the original object uh, unaffected. Um, it's not in any way damaged by your use of it, nor have you prevented anybody else from using it. And to steal something, you have to do either or both of those things, in my view. Um, so I use the word steal. Um, uh, so it, it, it's a horrible muddle and it has become really quite vicious. And it is indeed, um, uh, I, I doubt whether anybody ever intended it consciously to turn out this way. But what it me I mean, have you noticed the modern style in documentary videos where people are interviewed sitting on a bar stool you can't even see in a in a in a in a, in a room with a black background uh, it's very common now amongst d documentaries it's got nothing to do with artistic choice it's so that you do not have to request permissions for the painting on the study wall right. for the book titles on the shelf for the carpet, uh, if it's to be distributed in Europe, uh, uh, permissions for the furniture. Uh, furniture is protected in Europe, but not in the US, etc. It's just simpler when you're trying to show something about the real world to show an entirely fabricated one.
Can, can you? Well, I, I, I yeah. just want to. I want to follow up on that. It's like, what is the? Where is the rationale f for that? And because in very often, like, you're not only not um, diminishing the value of these things, you're increasing the value of it. Right. I mean, if I'm like, you know, if you're shooting me in a documentary or whatever it is, and I'm sitting on a, uh, you know, a, a, a really cool chair, uh, they may make some sales from that. I mean, um, if, uh, you know, there's a million examples of this. Um, I mean, how, what is the rationale here? Because there is no it just seems like a, a a monopoly for no apparent reason for no good reason that's right the way the copyright laws have been uh, phrased and framed uh have created their own opportunities for um uh, making entire new businesses out of nothing um Controlling for rights, uh, 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 trading rights, uh, um, venture capital investment in old songs, etc. Um, it's got quite out of hand. Um, and the reason that we have written this book is to tell people the way things are and really just ask, do you actually want things to be like that? Because the only way they're going to change uh, is if uh, uh, new legislation is introduced. But you can't introduce new legislation without there being a large public discussion of these issues um, uh, and, an un and our view is that you can't really understand what the issues are unless you have at least some knowledge of how things got to be that way because searching for an intellectual rationale for this great ramshackle sprawling thing called copyright uh, is I think a fool's errand it doesn't have an intellectual rationale it has a history and uh, uh, it's a history that's ended up somewhere that is remarkably like the circumstances of the uh, late 17th century. Um, uh, you know, my mother always to say, used to say, you can't, uh, um, uh, you can't turn the clock back. And my word, we have turned the clock back. Hmm. Can you can you give us a sense of how? threatening an overhaul of copyright law would be to some of these companies and their bottom line like Disney or mm. um, some of these software companies like Microsoft as well but we've, we've also covered on this program uh, Bill Gates's fixation with intellectual property within the context of vaccines but um, in terms of those software companies and these big conglomerates like Disney what would a overhaul do to their bottom line well, it depends how you overhaul it. I mean, obviously, if you did the sensible thing and said, no, you know, copyright should last for the lifetime of the creator and then stop. And therefore, corporate copyright should last for a lot less than 95 years to correspond. Uh, then for the vast majority of created works, it would make no difference because the vast majority of creative works earn money if they do earn money uh, for a few years at the most and then and then you know become just historical curious uh, but it would make a difference for the big companies like disney um uh, uh, that um continue to exploit almost a hundred years later um uh, intellectual property such as mickey mouse um that goes back a long way uh, i don't know how i mean i presume that it would if you did you know limit the um uh, the length of term of copyright it would reduce um, the prospects of, uh, you know, earning license fees forevermore um, and therefore somewhat alter the economics of the entertainment industry. Um, but if that spurred the entertainment industry to invest more in younger artists rather than relying on forever farming their old favorites, I think that would be no bad thing. They obviously would object to it and there'd be very powerful arguments because they've got lots of money um, with which to employ very clever lawyers. But uh, uh, I, I think it is really worth thinking about as to whether copyright ever needed to be as long as it has become. Well, absolutely. And I just think, though, it's the, the piece of, to underscore the existential threat for these corporations and what it would actually mean 
um, I think it makes the nonsensical nature of the law make a little bit more sense when you understand how much how many billions of dollars are involved in maintaining this kind of system. Well, yes, that's right. Uh, when you have a set of laws, people adjust to it and they f base their business models on it and they use the powers that it gives them. And those have become very big businesses indeed. I mean, uh, IP in the most general sense, I mean, trademarks, brands, patents, designs, and above all, copyrights now constitute a huge part of the U.S. economy. Uh, uh, some have... Uh, uh, come up with 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 truly amazing figures i'm i'm not an economist and i don't guarantee these numbers but i have read somewhere that copyright related industries in the us uh, uh account for about 20 percent of uh, of employment wow yeah um oh. i mean I, I don't quite know how that number's put together but it is it's a very large it's a very large part and a growing part of the us economy well, and indeed of the world economy as we consume I mean, I know we keep on consuming bigger burgers, but actually, proportionally, we keep on consuming more and more, how should I say, uh, um, uh, 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 virtual goods in the form of uh, TV and movies and songs and online newspapers and um, uh, social media um, and TikTok and so forth we constitute a larger and larger proportion of our uh, activities and expenditures. I, I would guess complete uh, stab uh that that 20 percent figure um is uh is it, it that it's not that the that that it's not necessarily copyright in its current form but rather uh the nature of of material that has been generated and you know ultimately becomes you know what we now call content because well, uh, maybe, maybe, but of, I think yeah. part of it is a way of protecting their protection uh, a racket, as it were, uh, and intimidating people from engaging in it and reforming it, because I suspect that we could have a much better system. Uh, and in fact, that number could theoretically be larger, even if it's not as profitable for a narrow set of players. So what... What would, if you were to look at reforms, aside from like just uh, years, and I imagine that would be a big part of it, is like length of time. Yes. Like, what would that? What would the reforms be? Uh, well, in our book, we're not proposing any new legislation. It's not a polemical book or a book that seeks to um, actually say this is the way copyright law should be. Uh, so I do want to make that clear. We, we, it is a history of how we got to be where we are um, uh, and also a rather irreverent account of the uh, not very respectable ideas and arguments that are used to prop up the current system. Most of them are really quite dishonest arguments. Um, but yes, length of copyright, the, the, the duration, you know, the term of copyright is what creates the high valuation of very successful works. Um, but it does absolutely nothing to spur new creation. And I think that it is really time we looked at that again. The second thing that really should be looked at again is what do we mean by a corporate copyright? How can an employer be an author? I mean, it's an abuse of the language to an employer. He isn't, and he knows he isn't. He just owns the rights. But in copyright law now, not just in this country, but worldwide, that word author has ceased to mean a guy who writes it means the owner of the rights and that's a perversion that needs to be turned back and we need to say well co is copyright law about keeping creators uh, 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 from begging on the streets um, or is it about something else um, and how would that I mean let's say we did institute that like what would be the sort of knock-on effects of that would it simply point people to a certain reality that might then inspire a different regime for someone who is an author versus one who is, you know, obtain the rights? Well, it might and it might not, because people can be very devious. I mean, for example, the rights to uh, the book that we're talking about now uh, belong to me and Alexandre Montague. 
But in order to get published, of course, we've uh, uh, signed a contract with a publisher in which we license that publisher to exploit the copyright in all possible ways for the duration of copyright. So it really comes to the same thing as the copyright in the book belonging to uh, uh, the publisher uh, and the publisher belonging to a corporation, etc. Uh, so no, I think you, we would have to think very carefully about how to um, or what we would want the outcome to be um, to curtail corporate control of um, individual creators so that at least some agency and uh, uh, some better deal is uh, emerges from it for uh, actual authors and creators and um, uh, artists. Uh, it, it's not easy to do, but that, that's what we ought to be talking about.